uh, we expect that number to uh, grow uh, to 10 in the next decade. There are about uh, 40 to sorry 50 to 60 ADC products in pipeline right now in, in early stage. Uh, that will take the overall market size of ADC to somewhere about $9 billion by 2024, uh, which will help the CDMO market actually for ADCs to grow from roughly about under 100 million right now to about a billion dollar. Uh, in the next nine to ten years. Now this is a significant growth opportunity and we are actually very excited to be part of that and to really uh, being able to serve our customers and cater to the business needs. We are expanding our capacity, we are looking at other things that we can do so that we remain a, a meaningful player and then you know, retain our market share and grow with the growth in the market. larger context of use of a targeting moiety to deliver a payload, I think uh, there, there's certainly a lot more that can be brought to the table in that regard. Traditional antibody drug conjugates, delivery by a double-stranded monoclonal antibody of a highly potent cytotoxin is certainly one very important area. But um, at its heart, Catalan's technology, for instance, is a way to attach something to a peptide backbone. That payload can be uh, another biological entity in the case of bispecifics. It could be a half-life extender, um, any number of types of payloads to elicit certain responses um, from the targeting, the target itself uh, can bring efficacious uh, areas of efficacy to the approach that you wouldn't necessarily have seen uh, possible in the past. Being able to vary the drug to antibody ratio, no matter the payload and the type of targeting moiety, can be very powerful and bring us into areas that are not, in a traditional sense, an antibody drug conjugate. Building on the two approved uh, ADC technologies that uh, are marketed today, I think the next two to five years are going to bring in tr tremendous strides in terms of safety and efficacy, particularly in delivery of highly potent cytotoxins. We're going to see homogeneous ADCs, we're going to see ADCs that are optimized for placement and stability, ones with wider therapeutic index that give us the ability to target cytotoxins and have an efficacious um, therapeutic window with much less toxicity. So safety is going to be a huge improvement as well as the ability to use multiple types of targeting entities uh, besides just double-stranded monoclonal antibodies. So what we've seen at Carbage and Amsis in the recent years has been a dramatic increase in customer inquiries on both the drug linker toxin synthesis as well as in the conjugation uh, synthesis of antibodies. Uh, most recently as a result of this interest we've invested in an additional highly potent uh, manufacturing site in Vienna, Switzerland and we've expanded our and built out a uh, clean room laboratory in our headquarters for the conjugation of antibody drug conjugates. One of the challenges with uh, antibody drug conjugate uh, conjugation chemistry is that you are dealing with both the potency of the toxin and the aseptic requirements of the antibody. So you have to, when you design a laboratory for example, you need to um, be concerned about pr uh, protecting the, the employee or the worker from the toxin and protect the antibody drug conjugate from the worker. So you're dealing in a, in a world now where a standard containment system is not sufficient and you have to think very carefully about the design of the laboratory, how the process is run, and how the, the final product is packaged to protect both the product at the end and the worker during the process itself. When 
we, uh, when we designed our lab, for example, we had to not only look at the uh, containment, we also had to be concerned about the regulatory um, aspects of maintaining a, a bacteria-free environment. Uh, thankfully, on the, uh, on the ADC drug substance side, we do not need to operate under sterile conditions, but we do need to have a clean room that um, controls the, um, the mi microbiological burden of, of the room as well as of the product. And this then involves uh, extensive uh, qualification of the facility and verification during operation that you are in a clean environment uh, that you can then guarantee the purity of your product at the end. we're seeing uh, from, from our customer inquiries is a much broader uh, focus on uh, tailor-made ADCs. The, uh, for example, we're seeing more uh, the use of peg linkers, for example, non-traditional non linking technologies to uh, aid in the delivery of the, uh, or the, the specificity of the ADC um, and also the properties of the ADC. So technologically, there's a, high, there's a, a changing market. Um, where we traditionally with Etcetra's at Katsila had a very uh, standard drug uh, antibody and linker. In this case, we're beginning to see variations on that theme. Uh, and we're also seeing a higher uh, level of uh, focus on the regulatory aspects of the components. So you have the complexity of an AD, uh, ADC that, that where you have to look at the GMP uh, preparation of both the drug, the linker, and the antibody. And this is, this is increasing in complexity and it seems to be happening earlier on in the development phase.